my name's Amanda Wood. I am the Sustainability Director for BA Systems Global Supply Chain. Um, and what I'd like to do in a very, very quick space of time is just tell you a bit of a story about our journey over the last 12 months to get our head, frankly, get our heads around and understand our scope three landscape, particularly in that supply chain space. Um, and talk to you about where we're at now and what our next steps are and, and maybe share some of the insights and the, the war wounds that I've got and the lessons learnt and, and you know that you might choose to consider going forward. So a little bit about BA Systems. Um, so we are a multinational aerospace and defence uh, company. We build and maintain complex military equipment. Um, across a number of uh, a number of domains that so you can see on the left hand side so uh, we build and maintain aircraft warships tanks or land equipment uh, we also make ammunition uh, submarines which are not up there so that's your kind of traditional physical war fighting capability if you will um, and then we also have a digital and a cyber business as well so quite a big portfolio um, with very, very long life cycles when we talk about building um, and then maintaining, uh, maintaining these bits of, frankly, very cool kit. Um, we have about 80,000 employees globally. We operate in four key markets. So that's the UK, the US, Australia and Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, when I think about our purpose, so the purpose statement you can see along the bottom there, we serve, supply and protect those who serve and protect us in a corporate culture that is performance driven and values led. And it's that last bit that's quite important because I've just told you what we do. It's not particularly sexy really. Um, and, and people will, including investor communities, will have a judgment on what we do. And sometimes it's difficult to make a connection between something as purposeful as ESG or net zero, drilling down into that, and what we do. And, and frankly, the two can go together. And they can go together because it's the right thing to do and because it also is a business differentiator. And we don't shy away from saying that, you know, this is absolutely the right thing we should be doing, but you can also create competitive advantage to do it. So our purpose statement talks to performance driven. So that's delivery of our programs and values led. And that's the purposeful uh, piece. So it's not what we do, it's how we do it. To give you an example of that, internally, uh, more than 60% of our non-financial incentive metrics for our, our employees are based on the ESG criteria. So this really matters. It's not a, a bolt-on. This has got to get down into our DNA as a company. So just thinking about our environmental impact. So these three pictures kind of summarise where we're at. So we absolutely are committed um, to reducing our impact on the environment in a number of ways. Um, we're going to talk about emissions in a moment, but things like biodiversity, nature, resource management, that's all there as well. From an emissions perspective, we have set ourselves the target of achieving net zero greenhouse gases across our operations, so scope one and two by 2030. And that's a science-based target committed with SBTI, so we signed up to race to zero. And we're pretty well on with that. And I think we pretty well understand that we've got a good baseline. We've got a, got a good plan, kind of know where we're going, if you will. Um, the next thing is our value chain, so scope three. So we have committed to working towards a zero, uh, net zero in our value chain by 2050. And the reason that we decoupled those two um, is because of the complexity of scope three. It's really tricky to understand and get your head around. Um, and what we wanted to do was make sure we we're on a quick path for the bits that we feel we're in, we're in control of. So we can directly influence and then recognising that it's going to be a bit more of a journey and a, and a collective effort to get to, our, um, to get to our value chain. So if I talk a little bit now about scope three. Um, so First, actually, first I'll give you an overview of our supply chain at BAE Systems. So uh, we spend about £10.5 billion a year with about 19,000 suppliers set across those four key markets. Um, the majority of it is in the US and the UK, and then we have a small amount in Australia uh, and a, a small amount in Saudi Arabia. So 
a big supply chain. Um, I think we have about 130 in our master taxonomy list in our spend system. So everything from indirect to direct, it's, you know, I think you name it, we probably buy it in a goods or service in some way, shape or form. So a, a very, very big supply chain. And when we think about scope three, so our scope three, really, we've only got kind of two material areas in the upstream and the downstream. So category one, procured services, that's mine, um, or procured goods and services. We know that that alone in that category is about four times the emissions of our own operations when we use our baseline year. So it's huge. The other material categories for us in scope three are product use, as you would expect whether we make them. Um, and that's 10, 11 and 12. Um, and that's, that's going to come with its challenges because of what it is we make and how we work with the governments who are our customers um, for that end product use and how you um, interact that or, or with, with operational capability of that military equipment because sometimes you're going to have to make a decision. So um, what have we been doing? So this was a 12 month exercise split into three phases. Phase one was setting our foundations. And that was about internally saying, right, what is it that we're trying to achieve here? Let's get really crisp on our objectives. Let's make sure it's realistic. Let's get the organisation lined up behind it. Let's identify what comms we need, what lines to take. Let's get our buyers all briefed, particularly those that are supplier facing. So when we get those questions, we know Let's get an initial comms out and effectively let's set ourselves up with what, with all of the enablers we need and take that time before we put it in lights what we're doing to make sure we're really behind this. We've got the right people, we've got the right backing. So that took about six months last year, believe it or not. Phase two was baselining our supply chain emissions because, right, if you don't understand that, where do you start? You just simply don't know where to start. And that's really tricky. Um, so, uh, we had a make versus buy decision to take. Do we do that ourselves or do we outsource that and or work with a partner? So, we chose to work with a partner. One of the representatives in the room today, um, yeah, from, uh, from, from PwC. So, we've been working with PwC uh, on our scope three supply chain emissions, uh, which has been really, really good. And so through that baselining process, we, we initially used the spend methodology. So spend and, um, and Imran will tell me I've got this wrong, but spend and two um, XEO base economic factors. So that's what it is we buy and where we buy it from regionally. Put that with spend and that's how we did our spend calculation. And then we will go on that maturity journey to hybrid reporting at some point. So once, um, once we achieve that baseline, which we'd never been able to achieve before, we get insights that everybody wants to get their head around. Um, and here is just some snapshots from a dashboard that we have. It's a live Tableau dashboard um, that we, update, we will update regularly, but these are just some of the views that we can now understand. So I told you that we had 19,000 suppliers, 10 and a half billion pounds. What we now know is that 3.4% or about 650 of those suppliers make up 80% of our emissions. So we know where to target. We know, we know who to engage first. We know spend versus category. So it's not just about how much we spend, it's what we buy. So we know on, on your standard bubble chart, the areas of supply and the category strategies that we need to be targeting early to get, that, to get that initial impact, if you will. And then obviously we know regionally from where we buy things, where are our hotspots. So all of these kind of things, if you will, went into our materiality assessment to say, who do we need to engage with first? What do we need to engage on in terms of what we buy and where do we buy it? And so that allowed us last year to do a board presentation. Um, so I know I've got oh, just a couple of minutes, is that all right? Yep. That allow us to do a, a board presentation last year to say, hey, we now understand the landscape. And, and I talk really simplistically and don't do it justice. It was really hard work. Um, and so the board were really happy with that. And we said, right, this year, we're now going to turn that into a strategy and launch the strategy. Um, and that's the objective for this year is to build the strategy you can see in phase three, confirm what levers we're going to use, how we're going to engage and what that materiality is. And then we'll be launching that. 
So um, that's, it sounds simple, but actually it's going to take a whole year. So I just wanted to leave you really with a couple of learnings. When I sit in a dark room at night and go, what would I have done differently? Or what did I wish I knew when we went on this journey last year? I've got five things. The first is, this will take longer than you think. Um, I, I guarantee it. You know, it's, it feels simple. It feels like a clear analytical process. It's not. It will take longer to get stakeholders engaged. And you kind of get swept up in the moment. And so we just kept saying, this is a marathon, not a sprint. You know, we're all trying to understand this. So it's just that check and balance of just slow down. There's no rush here. Get it right now. And it will pay us back in dividends. The second thing is um, engage with the suppliers. Don't try and do this by yourself. Tell them what you're doing. And, and we were really quite open and a little bit vulnerable and said, you know, we're on this journey. We don't have all the answers, but we want you to know that we're on the journey and we need you to come on it with us. And we want you to, and some of you we want to learn from because you're way ahead. And some of you, we'll, we'll show you what we've done and then you can go and do it yourself. So one of my big learnings is make sure we're talking to the suppliers all the time, not just we're doing this and then at the end we go, hey, check this out. It's more a along the way. And tell us how you want to be involved. Uh, data. So everything I know is that data is king. And um, with a procurement background, you would think by now that I know that spend data is not accurate. Um, <laughs> it's not. <coughs> Excuse me. Recovering from that virus that's been going around. Um, <clears throat> your data will not be 100% accurate. And we got into a bit of an OODA loop of trying to get it perfect before we moved on. And so the thing I learned was I have to accept that the data is not going to be perfect, but it's going to be good enough. And you kind of have that sanity check that says, do you know what, this is OK for where we're at. And we get better as we go. Because I think if we had tried to get it perfect, we probably stood there now, still trying to get our initial calculation out. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And the last thing I want to say is we have to be, as we go through this process and we launch our strategy, we have to be so careful and so thoughtful with our suppliers because it's really tough out there at the moment. I don't need to tell anyone in this room, you know, even just meeting time, cost and quality is really difficult. And then when you pile on sustainability, we have to be really careful to make sure this is a win-win, that, that this doesn't, be, doesn't get seen as a requirement, but actually it's a collaborative effort that everybody benefits from. And so at every stage of the process, when we look at T's and C's, when we look at scoring criteria, things like that, we must say, what impact is this having on the supplier and how could we help? <coughs>